How many of you loved math and chemistry in school? Now be honest now. Yeah. So when I grew up in India, there were millions of kids competing for thousands of places, and that really meant that you had no time for feelings. You had no time to feel if you liked things. But when I look back on that journey, I wish somebody gave me a little bit more passion in education, and I wish they were a little bit more better teachers. And when I moved to Sweden a few years ago, I was Googling around for how is education changing. And a couple of years ago, I found a wonderful company that combines neural networks, AI, to really put learning back on the track again, to really inspire kids to learn. And when I actually started Googling this company, I realized the guy who started it was 19 years old. And when I, caught, when I met him, he said, I'm 21 and a half. And then you know this, he's still very, very young. And today he's 22. Bear in mind, 22. Uh, he's a super talent of the year, entrepreneur of the year, CEO of Sana Labs. Joel Hellemark, welcome up. So imagine your brain while you're learning. 100 billion neurons forming one quadrillion connections. New memories being formed, old memories being forgotten, new concepts mastered, dopamine released. How would you capture that in a model? How would you explain it to a computer? This question lies at the very heart of the education revolution. Because if we can understand how humans learn and explain it to computers, we can also personalize content to students. And the effects of personalized education is extraordinary. So in this one study by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, students that received personalized content had 50% better learning outcomes over the course of a year. If you compounded that over a 12-year period, over the term of your schooling, this student will learn 100 times more. So the question, of course, is why aren't we personalizing education at scale? So attempts have been made, in fact, for almost a century. The first attempt was the printing press. And since the printing press was invented, very little has changed in how we share and consume knowledge. We still, to a very large extent, present the very same information in the very same way to all students. So Sidney Pressey invented this teaching machine. The teaching machine was an automaton with a few buttons where you could put in your, your answer. If you got a question correctly, you were rewarded with sweets, and it would collect how you'd answered questions and then uh, give you the next one on paper. So this was a highly innovative solution, but didn't really take into account the da much data about the student. The subsequent introduction of the Macintosh promised smarter ways to personalize. All of a sudden, we could collect all of the data that you were creating while interacting with the computer. However, capturing how we learn, capturing the intricacies of these 100 billion neurons forming one quadrillion connections, were too complex for the algorithms that existed back then. So you ended up with very simple rules and heuristics. If a student does X, do Y. But we now live in a very special time, a rare point in history where the confluence of fields is enabling personalization at a whole new scale and to a whole new extent. Those fields are online education, allowing us to collect immense data sets, hundreds of billions of rows of interaction data, combined with neural networks that can learn directly from that data. At the intersection, we believe that we have the next great education revolution, the next printing press. Because the power of neural networks lies in their ability to learn by themselves, meaning that indifference from Sidney Pressey's teaching machine or the Macintosh, it allows the computer to figure out patterns in how we learn and optimize it directly from raw data. We give the neural network a set of inputs, and then we tell it the expected output. Then it has to figure out 
and map out the patterns in this data. So you might tell it, for example, to predict whether a student would get a question correctly or not. From historical event rows, hundreds of billions of rows, it can in real time figure out, based on a student's proficiency, knowledge gaps, how engaged they've been, whether they'll get an answer correctly. We quite recently applied these kinds of systems to Atari. And the interesting aspect was that the programmers of this Atari program had no idea of how people um, played Atari effectively. However, the system was able to figure out an optimal strategy, digging a tunnel behind the bricks with superhuman accuracy, allowing the ball to stick there and eliminate all of the bricks. And this was a strategy that the programmers of, uh, of the Atari playing system had no idea about. And not uh, many other humans did either. So what was interesting, when you allowed the computer to figure out the patterns, the strategies that were most effective to, uh, to score high points on Atari by itself, it could figure out new strategies. So imagine, what is the equivalent for learning? What are this tunnel behind the bricks that can allow students to learn more effectively? Figuring out the strategy of how you master math, how you master chemistry, how to commit that so, uh, to your long-term memory so you never forget the information. At the company I founded, Sana Labs, that's what we're passionate about. How can we apply recent breakthroughs within artificial intelligence to allow for personalized education at scale. So in our team, we have a group of researchers and engineers who joined us from Google and Spotify and Boston Consulting Group, where they've been applying these methods to a wide range of, of, of applications. And we think the next great um, revolution in education is going to be powered by this. So how do we do this? Essentially, we take a collection of the data points you've, you've generated by interacting with a learning system. How you got a question, did you get it correctly or incorrectly? What mistakes have you made? How have you forgotten things? We then feed, feed that into our models, which could essentially predict the future. And then once we've predicted the future, then we can select the future that we like the best, the future where you have the highest proficiency and stay the most engaged. So the core of our, prob uh, of our algorithms is predicting how you'd interact with educational material and then selecting the one with the best predicted outcome. So in this case, you might be learning uh, languages through Duolingo, for example. In real time, as you interact with Duolingo, we collect all of the data about you, how you're, what mistakes you're making, what, what you've already mastered, and then we recommend the optimal next exercise for you to stay engaged. Meaning that you can, you can leverage these effects, which were apparent in the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, mastering 50% more having 50% better learning outcomes than if you had a one-size-fits-all model. So we quite recently participated in this global benchmark by Duolingo, where we could evaluate our solutions against a set of benchmarks. So we had some of the leading uh, researchers at Cambridge participating, NYU's Cognitive Science Lab, this Chinese company, which has raised tens of millions, which only specializes in language learning. And what was interesting is that in our team, we have no idea about how we learn languages. We're just really good at machine learning. So very similar to with the Atari game, we didn't tell our models how we learn languages or what we know about the content, etc. We allowed them to figure out for themselves. So you could figure out if a student uh, does a particular mistake, they'll probably do that in the future, so you have to recommend material to address that. We could figure out your proficiency and recommend material which is just at the right difficulty. And we ended up winning all categories on all evaluation metrics. So this is really a testament, partially, that the solution can be content agnostic. We don't only have to specialize for language learning. We can do this for math. We apply the exact same algorithms we use for math to language. 
and the computer can figure out for itself how do we learn, what's the um, parameters about the content, and use that to optimize your learning. So what does this mean for, for students? This means for, for two students that go through the, the same content historically, gets the optimal next material, the right explanation, the right video they need, questions which are at the right difficulty, truly scaling the personalization of the curriculum. So one of the core problems now is the amount of teachers we have. And it's clear that we'll never be in a situation where every single student globally can receive a personalized human teacher. How, however, what's interesting is, with the power of artificial intelligence, can we take some of the aspects that a human teacher has done historically? Giving you a few exercises that address your knowledge gaps, giving you that reading material, and provide that to every single student. Because the benefits of artificial intelligence is that we're not limited by any aspect. We're not limited by cost, but we can truly provide this at a global scale. And that's one of the more utopic, I think, scenarios when it comes to artificial intelligence. So here's one example. We've partnered up with NE in Sw Sweden to personalize math curriculum um, for, uh, for um, K-12 students across Sweden. And in this example, as a student interacts with the material, it's give them, it gives them something to review because they have forgotten it. A student answers a question incorrectly. They then get material which addresses that knowledge gap and gives them questions which are at the right level. So through this system, every single student in the classroom gets a completely personalized user experience, powered by artificial intelligence. So we're bringing this around to schools in, in Sweden, uh, Sweden now. It's, all, it's already live. We've also partnered up with some of the world's largest language learning companies to integrate this technology in, into their products. And really what we see ourselves is, is being um, ubiquitous across all these learning platforms. So we don't develop the content, we don't develop the user experiences, but we develop the intelligence that powers them. So we want to be sort of the Gore-Tex or the Intel inside of, of all the learning products globally and truly achieve ubiquity. So we're already pa partnering up with uh, publishers, education companies, with tens of millions of, of users and powering them with these learning products. And that's our ambition. We don't want to be limited by any educational domain or by scale. We want uh, every single learning product globally to be able to use artificial intelligence in this way and bring the benefits of artificial intelligence, which has transformed major parts of our other lives, to education. So in our team, we've built this, this, uh, this team of world-class researchers and engineers, which historically could have cost um, these education companies tens of millions to build in-house. It could have taken them up to 18 months to deploy these solutions due to heavily being able, uh, being, having to heavily tag up the content. And we're giving that at an accessible price where they can integrate it in days rather than months. So the quickest integration we did of this technology was in a single day, meaning that any education company globally could in a few days get up and running with artificial intelligence and provide these truly personalized learning experiences. And the other aspect we find really interesting is what will we figure out about how humans learn? So if you looked at the Atari example, we actually figured out a new way of playing Atari was which was incredibly more effective. The same uh, went when we applied um, artificial intelligence to learn to play the game of Go. In the second game where the AlphaGo played the world champion, the 37th move, humans have never seen that kind of move before, and they thought it was a mistake. However, 
it ended up being the move that, that, went, uh, that led the system to win the game. So what are these new patterns about how we learn that we can figure out using this immense amount of data and artificial intelligence? How do we forget things? How do we drive engagement? And a few of those we've already figured out to date is that when students have around 70% probability of getting questions correctly, that's when they stay the most engaged. So that's when the, when the content is not too difficult, but neither too hard. So they get, they, they get the optimal level of challenge so that they can receive the content which drives their curiosity but doesn't allow them to get stuck. Another pattern which was pretty interesting is that when, when the Swedish students were learning English, they might only have to review camera two times because camera is very similar in Swedish. Whereas if you take another word like ubiquitous, uh, these students would have to review it 12 times, and the memory would fade exponentially. So if you take camera, it would sort of fade very incrementally, but if you take um, ubiquitous, it would fade exponentially. So all of those sort of strategies and how we learn, how we forget things, we can capture using these immense data sets and, and neural networks, and then harness them to provide more personalized learning experiences. So now we're partnering up with the world's leading companies in programming education, language education, corporate learning. We're working on products for math, for chemistry, for physics, truly powering the full education industry using this artificial intelligence. And our end game is really personalized education for everyone, everywhere. So empowering every single student globally to learn 100 times more throughout their school years. So that's all on, on SANA and, uh, and the vision behind it. Thank you.